how, how do each of you decide what role you'll play, either as a character in the film or as a narrator? We really struggled with this, like on Free Solo, yeah. where, and it's kind of the virtue of the directing partnership where I can kind of torture my directing partner, who's also my husband, because he has to be in the film. <laughs> but it was, we were very reluctant to always do this, but then it became very clear that the ethical question that's like the existential center of this film had to be grappled with in the film itself by revealing how we were doing this and the discussions that were happening around this. And also, just from a storytelling point of view, like that, you know, Alex was alone, and you need someone to respond to him, to help an audience. Totally, and that, that, that cameraman you have yes. respond yeah. is just the most extraordinary. I mean, it right. sort of yes. makes, right. I mean, that last sequence yes. is extraordinary anyway, but yeah. having the, the yes. camera person, like, freaking out yes. is like, and you, you get that he's like a hardened professional, and he's still having that reaction. Oh, no, yes, and it's, he has that reaction because he knew the route the best. Yeah. So he knows exactly where the difficult parts are. But Jimmy never wanted to be part of the movie. And... But, you know, <laughs> you forced him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a wonderful thing about this directing partnership. I was like, it's yeah. really, really important. And, you know, you do it. But it's, all, it's like how to do it, the moderation, the degree, um, without taking away from your subject itself is it, hard. It. We're in the age of Trump, and everything is political these days. Are there aspects of the film that came out differently or may have met it with a different reaction from audiences because of the moment we're living in right now? We've been having this debate around Free Solar, this conversation, because here it is, a film that has got nothing to do with politics, so to speak, but why are audiences responding to it in the degree that they did? I think it's because you, we give people an opportunity to see someone who actually does something Right, who has this vision and actually does something, and that also he's able to connect when you don't think he could connect. Like ultimately, it's about people working together in some way, and it's a respite. But like, like the film was released like the day of the Kavanaugh hearings, and like getting up to do those Q and As, and like looking at the audience when all I want to do is like look be, look on Twitter and see what happened <laughs> yeah. was really emotional for us. But then it also was like a respite from what we were living. And like an inspiring story of courage, like that, you know, we can all have this vision and like work really hard and do something. Thank goodness for documentary films. Well, I think the <laughs> metaphor of your film like yeah. f uh, fits really well right now. Like to a certain extent, we're all just like pushed up against, <laughs> you know, the rock. We're like, clinging on by the, the, the skin of our fingers with just like a little bit of chalk to keep us <laughs> from falling off. So we'll get through. Like, we'll get to yeah. the top. You know, I just feel like, like time is, like, for, for a documentary filmmaker, time is a great antagonist. In my experience, the longer you can stretch that, and the, you know, we've got six decades in our film, but even, you know, even with Alex, you know, he, having to climb before the, the end of this climbing season and having to make it all before he gets too old to kind of attempt it, you know, it's, it's kind of a central theme of all the best docs, I feel. It became like a, a central idea that you only have a finite amount of time. Mm -hmm. And that was really important to him. And it actually made me think a lot about how much time I have and what I'm doing with my time. Well, he says but so it, simply in the film, yeah. you know, there's this allusion, you can die at any time. Yeah. And there's this illusion that that's not the truth. And the fact that he does what he does is just a constant reminder, which is a constant reminder for us. It's a really good reminder that we have to relish every single day and like live it with intention. I mean, how conscious are you when you're assembling your film of eliciting an emotional response from the audience. We knew that the climb was going to be terrifying, mm -hmm. you know, and I will say that we did become immune from editing and editing and editing, but we knew that, and it was also always about how can we, be, how can we manage that for our audience. We began making this film and Alex was online dating and setting up dates in every stop of his book tour. <laughs> <laughs> So our great surprise is when he brought a woman home, Sonny. It just really provided this opportunity with the film for us to make it about a connection mm -hmm. uh, where we could really build something. And so it was about climbing, but it was actually about connecting and falling in love. I didn't understand what sort of experience it would be when we made this film. And then watching it with the first audience, we were like, whoa. Hi, I'm Julie Cohen. And I'm Bing Liu. I'm Tim Woodle. I'm Rashida Jones. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter Roundtables on YouTube. On YouTube. On YouTube.